Resilient traitor. Fucking faggot. Independent war criminal transvestite. Resourceful threat to the USA. Die, Manning, die. Unbreakable, whistleblower, fragile, tortured, fucking die now, Manning. Dehumanised. I was kicked out of my home and I lost my job. The world is not moving fast enough for us at home, at work or on the battlefield. I've been living a double life. I can't make a statement. I can't be caught in the act. I hope the public support for me changes. Okay, so Bradley Manning was charged with 22 offences of war crimes. But the most serious of all of these was this. Aiding the enemy. Now that carries a lot of weight. And here's the thing, and I didn't know this actually until I started researching this story. In certain parts of America, if you are found guilty of aiding the enemy, you can be sentenced to death. Now, around the leaked footage, the footage that Bradley had put out there, there was outrage, there was controversy, there was just this whole Bradley Manning is a traitor, and so, so many people wanted to see him die for leaking the footage of these US soldiers. And then, well, there was the other side of it, which there, you know, always will be, and always should be. The other side of it was, no, he was absolutely right. What he did was right. If you see something and you know something's wrong, then you need to shout about it. So there's 22 charges and there's lots of attention. So Bradley Manning gets placed into confinement at Marine Corps Brig Quantico. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Quantico? Quantico? To go, go one, go. <laughs> I hope that's right. Quantico, I think, is right. Prior to this, he had spent a little time in prison in Kuwait, but you know, it doesn't really matter where he was. Essentially, he is now a prisoner. Now, this is where you start to get into a lot of the reading about the treatment of Bradley in prison. And, oh, oh, I tell you, it is not nice. It's not nice at all. In Quantico, he gets placed on suicide watch because his behaviour, well, it gets described as alarming. Now, was it true that his behaviour was alarming. No, it wasn't. No, it fucking wasn't. It was basically a control measure. I mean, this, it was a punishment. It was just a punishment from the army. I mean, if you were in the US army right now and the name Bradley Manning came up and you were in a position to abuse Bradley Manning, you were going to use that opportunity because basically he was threatening your entire life. He was threatening everything that that was the US Army. 
So, of course, he wasn't going to get an easy ride. Of course he wasn't going to get an easy ride. And so, he gets placed into solitary confinement. I hate the word solitary. I can never say it. Well, I can say it. Solitary. He gets placed into solitary confinement. And the conditions he are, he are, he are, is he a pirate? No, he's not a pirate. The conditions that he gets placed into are this. He gets made to sleep naked. And every day, once a day, Bradley Manning is made to parade around the prison completely naked. So prison guards would grab him and force his body to walk around naked in front of all the other prisoners. For 23 hours of the day, he was woken every 20 minutes by a different army official who would shout in his face to assure that he never slept properly. So for one hour in 24, he was allowed to go to sleep. And for the other 23, every, every 20 minutes, he was being woken up and not allowed to fall into a deep sleep. His cell was six foot by 12 foot. Oh my God. Now this six foot, 12 foot business, actually work that out for yourself, right? I, I, I did this because I was like, six foot by 12 foot, right? I'm just gonna, oh my fucking God. Just do that and realize just what a tiny, tiny space that is. I mean, it's absolutely so shockingly small, but that is what he was made to sleep in. As well as this, Bradley had to be entirely visible at all times. So there were forever constant lights shining on him because guards had to be able to see him at all times. So that meant Bradley had to sleep entirely naked with no bed sheets. He slept naked on a cold floor and he wasn't allowed a cover over him so that guards could see at all times Bradley Manning just lying there completely naked. No other contact with a human being was allowed for Bradley. And this is just all a part of his punishment for being a traitor against the US Army. Now, you know, there's always going to be good people in life, and I hope that you are one of those good people. I would like to consider myself to be one of those good people. There were people who were working in the prison, other army officials who, you know, I don't know, maybe maybe didn't like the fact that he'd leaked all of this stuff and maybe had their own personal issues, but they also were seeing the conditions that Bradley was being kept in and they were trying to say, look, this is not right. Like, okay, I understand he leaked files that are harmful to us and he may have compromised us in some way but you cannot keep a human being like that they were watching his condition you know 20 fucking four hours a day lying naked on a prison cell floor being woken up every 20 minutes and they were saying look this is the most inhumane of conditions you know the problem is they're going up to their superiors or they're trying to go above. No one's listening. No one's listening to this. So what these people do who are witnessing this terrible treatment of a human being is they go to the press. They go to the press and they say, look, these are the conditions that Bradley Manning is being kept in. We're, we're just telling you this from the inside because we're seeing it all the time and it's horrific. It's horrendous. These same people start to leak other bits of information about 
how Bradley is being treated in prison. There's a whole turn left, don't turn left thing which happens, which is basically where soldiers storm into Bradley's tiny, tiny, tiny little 6 by 12 foot cell and they start shouting orders at him like, turn left. And the minute he turns left, they say, I didn't say turn left, I said turn right. So he turns right and then they slap him across the face and say, listen to the instruction, turn left. So he turns left and then they punch him in the face and say, no, we said turn right. And there's just this like constant, like trying to basically, what they're trying to do is they're trying to break him down as a human being to nothing. They're just trying to, they can't kill him, but essentially what they're trying to do is break down his mental health to a point where he's just actually just the most broken, broken human being. Now, Bradley's going through this absolute horror in prison, in army prison, and of course the trial is looming overhead. And if Bradley is found guilty of the 22 crimes against him. He's either facing death or he's facing life in prison. And at this point he's 24 years old. But, and this is a massive reason for me telling Bradley's story, that was what was happening inside the prison. What was happening outside of it? Well, don't ask and don't tell was becoming hugely challenged. And it was now because of the Bradley Manning story that Don't Ask, Don't Tell came back into the spotlight and people were beginning to go, this is ridiculous. If he had been allowed to be himself in the army, it's not to say that he wouldn't have leaked information, it's just that he wouldn't possibly have been treated so badly in the army to the point where he was pushed to do something he might have you know gone through the proper channels he might have actually gone to someone else above him and said look I'm finding footage that's really distressing I'm finding footage that shows our army basically murdering people and he might have had a reasonable conversation about that but because of the fact that Bradley was never allowed to be himself and was punished from day one of stepping into prison meant that when the time came for him to react it was massive it was huge that leaking of documents was almost like the biggest fuck you in the world essentially is yeah that that's just my way of reading it but i do think that's what it is i do think it was a big fuck you you have treated me like an animal since the day i started in the army and when i tried to talk about gender dysphoria and when i tried to talk about being gay all that happened was i ended up being beaten i ended up being fucked over by everybody and so now fuck you all that's that's what i think so don't ask don't tell is being challenged and you know people are a bit more awakened to things now and they're going well actually is it ridiculous and is it really actually pretty archaic to not allow gay people into the military it does seem really silly to be a bit like oh no we don't want these gays in the army why what what, what do you think they're gonna do like <laughs> try and bum you in your sleep no i don't think so you know what i mean like what like what's your what's your problem what's your concern do you think, they would, think gay soldiers were going to start arriving and being like, oh, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll put some glitter everywhere and we'll start singing Celine Dion at the top of our voice. <laughs> You're here, there's nothing I fear. I don't think so. Do you know what I mean? <sighs> it's 
it, it's it's so insulting. It's just, I'm sorry, I don't want to keep banging on about it as if I'm just going on about the same thing. But it's just so insulting to be like, gay people can't be in the army. Some of the best <laughs> females I know in the world are lesbian, right? Amazing, strong women, incredible. Some of my, like, I've got friends, right? who are about six foot tall, are built like machines and have the quickest fucking reactions in the world. And I'm telling you, they're who I would like to protect me in a fight. I mean, they might also, yeah, they might enjoy, you know, a bloody Christina Aguilera song every now and then and wearing a wee tight pair of pants. But so fucking what? They're the person that if I was in a fight in the street, I would want them (laughs) <laughs> to be <laughs> to to jump in for me, so you know, it's embarrassing really for the US at this point. Don't ask, don't tell. It's suddenly brought back, and people have to talk about it again. And it's embarrassing because it's just like, well, you never really got it right in the first place. You know, Bill Clinton of Monica Lewinsky fame just never really got it right. I, I sort of see what he was trying to do, just badly, badly executed. But now, Obama is the man in charge. Now, Obama, he has a different opinion on it. He sort of listens a bit to actually what's happening now, and he looks at the Bradley situation, and I suppose understands that what Bradley's saying is, I never, I never wanted to come into the army and shove my gayness down anybody's throat. <laughs> For want of a better way to put it. <laughs> Bradley never wanted to do that. But he's also saying, I just had never wanted to lie either. I just wanted to speak the truth. And, it, it, you know, it seems stupid that we, would, that we would pretend we don't all know who we are. And Obama listens to this and he's like, yeah, actually, there is a lot of sense in that. I can kind of make a bit of sense. Anyway, we'll get back to Obama in a second and what Obama does. So Bradley Manning has a lawyer on the outside and he is fighting, oh, the good fight. And he manages to, God bless him, manages to get Bradley one thing and it's this. He gets Bradley a cover to sleep in at night. He manages to get Bradley a cover to put over him. In order to get that cover, he has to go to court twice and fight the Human Rights Act. How fucking ridiculous. Ridiculous is that? How fucking ridiculous. I just, I can't. Honestly, this lawyer must just be like, I've had to go to court twice now and put up a case to basically just get a human being who's in an army prison a cover to put over them. It's just... So all of this is being publicised and it's all making its way through the government and the story of Bradley Manning's treatment in prison is being heard and Obama says, I will ensure, I will ensure that Bradley Manning gets the correct treatment in prison. He says, I will ensure that Bradley gets put into a bigger cell and is treated with much more humane conditions. And that happens. Obama makes that happen so Bradley gets moved into a cell with a bed. He is allowed to sleep. He's given the correct amount of food. He has a cover. 
And he's treated basically at this point just like any other US soldier in an army prison. Which is great. Which is progress. I mean, it's major, really. It's absolutely major because Obama's the president at this point. And according to the rest of the world, Bradley Manning has leaked footage and files which have threatened the very core of America and Obama is saying I'm going to make conditions for him better. So during the time when the trial is approaching Bradley writes this letter for the world to see and it becomes a public letter. It's intended for everyone and it reads this I am Chelsea Manning. I am female. Given the way that I feel and have felt since childhood, I want to begin hormone therapy as soon as possible and I hope that you will support me in this transition. I also request that starting today you refer to me by my new name and use the feminine pronoun she her and look forward to receiving letters from supporters and having the opportunity to write back I tell you what's really interesting about this I found this fact and I just oh it just made me so angry there was a lot of support for Chelsea Manning There was a lot of support. A lot of people wanted to write letters. They wanted to send things to prison. You know, it's people wanted to send food. They wanted to send care packages. They wanted to send all these different things. And a lot of it just didn't make it through. After that, Chelsea Manning had to write another statement that said, an official mail for the confinement facility army prison please address everything to Bradley and not Chelsea and why was that okay why was that well I'll tell you because although Bradley Manning had made this statement in which it starts I am Chelsea Manning The US Army Prison refused, refused to acknowledge Bradley as Chelsea. So, when it came to orders, when it came to any instructions, it was Bradley, Bradley, Bradley. Now what Chelsea would do is try and ignore those orders came a point where she couldn't, she just, she couldn't listen to that anymore and had to sometimes acknowledge being called Bradley. But the thing about the letters is really interesting because there were approximately 5,000 letters a week, a week, 5,000 letters a week, can you fucking imagine that? 5,000 letters a week arriving to the prison in support of Chelsea Manning's actions, the choice to leak that information, you know, people being like, Chelsea is a hero, thank God someone stood up and said, you know, there's corruption, there's all these things. Anything, anything at all that was addressed to Chelsea went straight in the bin. The US Army would not even contemplate passing those letters on. If it was addressed to Bradley, then yeah, okay, it made its way along. Anything that said Chelsea, straight in the bin. And it's just another one of those fucking 
army control measures where once more Manning is just changing the boundaries, changing it slightly and the army don't know quite how to cope with it. So therefore what they will do is they refuse to accept the fact that Bradley is now Chelsea. And the fact that since the age of five years old and from the point when he was ten and went to his dad and said, I want to be a woman, just ignore it entirely. So, it's Bradley and any letters that say Chelsea, bin, straight away. It's just another way to degrade this human being. So the trial begins and from this point on in the story, as I've already started doing, I will just be referring to Chelsea because that's where that's where the central character in this story is and that's who they are and I have to respect that. So the trial for Chelsea Manning begins and in the initial days it looks as if the death sentence is still on the cards. There's 22 charges and it's, yeah, it's pretty fucking serious. The trial begins and there's two major, major schools of thought here. The prosecution, they want Chelsea to be a major example and you know an example of a fuck up basically someone who has turned against their own country and they go for this sort of tact when they when they try Chelsea in court they go for Chelsea felt she was better than the rest of us. She felt she understood concepts of war better than anyone. They go in really hard on the traitor and the war criminal angle. And basically, the long and the short of it, and again, this is just where it's like a kick in the fucking balls, they go un-American, completely un-American. They go, Chelsea should never be free because she gave away our secrets. The defence, well, they present a different kind of case. They say no. No, this is someone who saw the horrors of the world and was trying, was just trying to show us all the true cost of war was trying to show us that the US Army were abusing their power against smaller countries and Chelsea Manning should not be punished for that the defence bring in a psychologist who has a really I think lovely way to put this He says, well, Chelsea Manning was under the impression that the leaked information was going to really change the world. It was going to change how we viewed Afghanistan and Iraq and future wars, actually. This was an attempt to document war for society as a whole and lead us all to the conclusion that war is not worth it. There is no war in the world that is worth it and Chelsea Manning tried to show us that. So the trial comes to an end. Now if the jury do not decide on the death penalty, 
In the old days, the sentence for war crime and for leaking any kind of information came with a 90-year sentence. But, again, Obama had changed that. He brought it down to 60 years. And, really, you would only serve about 30 of that. In court, Chelsea Manning stood up for herself and she was so open about the things that she had seen. At first, I did not consider the videos very special, as I have viewed countless other war porn type videos depicting combat. However, Recording of the audio comments by the aerials weapon team and the crew began to trouble me. They dehumanised the individuals they were engaging and seemed to not value life by referring to them as, and I'm quoting, dead bastards. At one point, In one of the videos I leaked, there is an individual on the ground attempting to crawl to safety. This individual is seriously wounded. The crew members laugh at this individual and for me, This seems similar to a child torturing ants with a magnifying glass. I hope that the public are as alarmed as me about the conduct of the aerial weapons team crew members. I want the American public to know that not everyone in Iraq and Afghanistan are targets that need to be neutralised, but rather people who are living in a pressure cooker. As I hoped when I released this footage, others were just as troubled, if not more so, than me by what I saw. She says to the courtroom, if you were seeing the atrocities committed by the US Army every day, you would speak up too. But nobody does. Nobody does. I did. And I will be punished. And I have been treated like an animal for telling the truth. But this is your America and I want you to wake up. Now can you imagine how that goes down? It's just more traitor, hater, wants to destroy America. She also says, I'm sorry if my actions have hurt people and I'm sorry I've hurt the United States. But at the time of my making these decisions, I was dealing with a lot of my own issues. So the court case continues, and (laughs) I love this, right? (laughs) This is brilliant. (laughs) Chelsea Manning is the only person (laughs) in the history of the world who has attempted to call a US president to attend their trial. She actually asked for Obama to come along (laughs) to her trial. Obama said no. Um, (laughs) Thanks for the invite. It was really, really nice of you to invite me along, but actually I'm just, I'm really busy that night. No, it's not that. It's not that Obama was busy, but it, it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't quite right for Obama to step in there and speak on Chelsea's behalf, but I love the I love the gumption of that. Just being like, um, right. So for the defence team, who could we call? Oh, there's that witness. There's that. What about Obama? 
Oh, brilliant. Oh, great. <laughs> Let's call the US president in. <laughs> Although, I mean, in a way, it, it, when I'm sort of saying that actually now, when I'm talking that out loud, it's kind of maybe not the craziest of things. Or is it? Is it nuts? I oh, don't know. You tell me. Is it crazy? Well, I don't think so because Obama's been involved in this so far. You know, like, from a distance. Hasn't met Chelsea Manning, but knows the story and has made some... You know, had, had a sort of presence in it. So, I don't know. Maybe it's not that mad. Anyway, the court case, it comes to a close. And Chelsea Manning is sentenced to 35 years in prison for 18 of those 22 charges. But mainly... That 35 years is because of the charge aiding the enemy. Chelsea is still a soldier at this point, so it's not it's not normal jail. <laughs> it's army jail. Chelsea goes to prison in Kansas and it's here that further issues will happen so Chelsea's not yet been allowed to see or have access to any sort of hormone therapy or being able to start the transition from male to female but (laughs) and this is why I just this is why I think this story is brilliant because Chelsea Manning is just determined to make everything not difficult for everything, but she's just ready to challenge the system at every point. So the new fight becomes about, well, I may well, I might be a male soldier in a male prison. Why can I not start hormone therapy? Why can I not start the transition to being female? And I do think that's the actual root of it. I do think the root of it is actually... Chelsea Manning just wants to disrupt the system. So prison life begins and it's brutal once more. It's beatings, it's more isolation, it's more being starved, not allowed access to people. But Chelsea is just going to ride the wave and go through it. I mean, that's a lot of strength because... She must have been thinking at that point, I've got 35 years of this ahead of me. Now, outside of the prison, there begins a movement, a protest movement, and I bloody love a protest movement. Oh my God, it gets me so excited. I fucking love a protest movement. And this one is called, I am Bradley Manning and I bloody love this you've now got 3 million people in America on the same day protesting in a protest that they're calling I am Bradley Manning so they're carrying signs which say free Bradley they are carrying signs that say free Chelsea because we're still in that kind of Bradley Chelsea sort of world there's t-shirts, there's slogans, there's masks there's everything out of this also comes something that I would so recommend you go and watch on YouTube, it lasts four minutes, it's absolutely beautiful and it starts with the actress Maggie Gyllenhaal brother of Jake Gyllenhaal and it's got Maggie Gyllenhaal, it's got actresses, it's got politicians, it's got Russell Brand, it's got comedians, it's got basically loads of big figures that you will know and the video is just called I am Bradley Manning and it's people speaking the words of Bradley Manning or Chelsea but also just talking about the fact that Telling the truth is the most important thing you can do. 
Now, that's all happening outside. Does Chelsea have any clue that this is happening? No. No. She's in this solitary confinement, horrific place. So no idea that three million Americans are marching on her behalf. No idea that's happening. The letters that are coming in to the prison, they're not getting to her. She's never seeing any kind of public support. No idea that people are behind her. I think this bit is really interesting. You know all those people that Chelsea went to at first? So the Washington Post, the New York Times, all the people that Chelsea went to at first when she said, I have this footage, I have this really incredible footage of the US Army. And they all went, no, not interested. Those people are now biting their arm off to try and get an interview with Chelsea Manning. They're trying to get the information. If I was Chelsea, I mean, I can imagine I'd be like, fuck you. Fuck you, you weren't really interested when I came round the first time. I didn't want my information then. And all of a sudden you're interested now. <laughs> For seven years, seven long long years the battle continues and there are protests and there are attempts at changing laws within army prisons and eventually here he comes again Obama steps in Obama decides to commute Chelsea's sentence meaning that Chelsea Manning, having served seven years of a 35-year sentence, can walk free. I mean, that's fucking major. Presidents do not just step in to situations and go, yeah, well, that person can be free, and that one can be free, and this one and that one. Obama only ever commuted one sentence in his entire time as president and it was Chelsea Manning's and Barack had this to say on letting Chelsea Manning be free I have this to say I feel very comfortable that justice has been served let's be clear Chelsea Manning has served a tough prison sentence. My actions will not encourage espionage and future leaks of classified information. The notion that the average person who is thinking about disclosing vital classified information would think that it goes unpunished is ridiculous. I don't think you would ever get that impression from the sentence that Chelsea Manning has served. It has been my view that given she went to trial and that due process was carried out and that she took responsibility for her crimes and that she has served a significant amount of time that it is now time for Chelsea Manning to be free and so that's what happens Chelsea is set free and it's good news it's great news it's yeah but that's not the opinion of everyone. Plenty of people wanted to see Chelsea Manning die in prison. And now Don't Ask, Don't Tell rears its head again. And once more, 
Obama steps in and he gets rid of don't ask, don't tell. It no longer exists. I'm pretty sure, um, was, was Lady Gaga not involved in the whole don't ask, don't tell thing? Did she not do the whole I'm beautiful in my way God makes no mistakes in the re-. Born This Way and all that. Was that not all about don't ask, don't tell? Or am I just making things up now? I might just be making things up. No, I do think that there's some... There's a Lady Gaga don't ask, don't tell connection. I can't quite remember at this moment what it is, but I, I, I'm not wrong. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> he says, and then I'll turn it to be totally wrong. So... Chelsea is free and she moves into an apartment in New York and of course all the questioning starts to happen. Can you talk about your time in jail? Can you talk about your relationship with Obama? Can you talk about all of these types of things? And I d- there's a, a quote that Chelsea says at this point and I, just, I think it's really interesting I just think it's really yeah I think it's a real insight into what was going on in her brain she says when I try to tell people what it's been like there's just a massive block if I had done anything differently then I would have been a completely different person and I can't go back in time but I also can't go back through the analysis of trying to work out if I should have been someone different. She says I don't have a story in my head about what happened. It just happened. Some of it I'm able to talk about. Solitary confinement I just can't ever talk about that. I've not been ready to talk about it. I've blocked it out. I just can't. I've spent the last seven years of my life fighting to survive. And that was my main focus. You have all had the opportunity to unpack this, but I never did. I was living it daily. I was in the mode of survival. And while I lay in solitary confinement day after day, my only focus was survival, but on the outside world, you were all unpacking it. I have never had that time. Hmm, I think there's something quite sobering in those words. I do, I think there's something really like, ooh, okay, yeah, it's actually true. Sort of, I guess, not to wander too far off the point, but... I suppose it's it, it's one of those like almost like victim impact statements. It gives me that kind of like idea of like going well as a podcaster. I just tell lots of stories, but actually, there's such a truth in those words, and they're so beautiful in the way that Chelsea Manning says you've all had time to unpack the story and deal with it and understand it, process it, digest it for yourself. But if you're someone who's living it, you've never really had that time to do that. And it's up to other people to try and unpack the story for you, but they can't really ever do that. But yeah, I just think there's something beautifully interesting in that. So Chelsea just wants to get on, but is the nightmare over? No, it's not. And that's because of a man who I mentioned earlier on, and we will all know his name, Julian Assange, the WikiLeaks founder. The man intent on making sure that governments don't lie to us. I said this earlier and I said it would be important. When Chelsea was leaking all of those documents, 
was it directly to Julian Assange? We're never going to know. Do they have some kind of relationship? I would guess yes. A lot of people would guess yes they do. But will they ever admit that they know each other? No, they won't. So you'll know that Julian Assange was taken from his hiding place. Was it Ecuador? No. Am I making that up? Ecuador? Wherever it was. Somewhere like that. And he was put into prison in the UK for his crimes. And the crimes were leaking lots of government information. Although, do you know, can I just tell you this, right? This is a total sidebar. On the day that um, Julian Assange was um, arrested and extradited, sorry, out of Ecuador, wherever he was, and taken to the UK. I love the fact that on Twitter there were two things trending. Number two was Julian Assange and the whole story. (laughs) Number one, Julian Assange's cat. (laughs) <laughs> because he had a cat in the house that he was in hiding in, right? A cat who wears a bow tie. <laughs> and I love the fact that actually more people on Twitter were concerned about, well, what's going to happen to Julian's cat? Like, what? what was going to happen to his cat? Don't, don't really care about him. Don't, don't really care about the fact that he's been, like, taken to a prison in the UK. Now, nah, what's going to happen to the cat? I feel that's a very interesting indictment upon the world. (laughs) So, here's what happens. Chelsea Manning is brought in front of a grand jury and is made to speak about Julian Assange. Would she? No, because she's not someone who's ever going to play by the rules. She just won't do it. She says, no, I'm not ever going to tell you if we were in cahoots, if I was ever speaking to Julian Assange. And so do you know what the outcome of this is? Chelsea Manning is back in prison. And as I record this episode, and as you hear this episode, after everything that we've fucking been through, Chelsea Manning is back in prison. And this is basically the courts and the system looking for a way to punish Chelsea. It's basically going, you need to admit that Julian Assange was part of your whole leak. And Chelsea Mann is going, no, I, no, I won't. I'll say it was part of WikiLeaks. I'm not naming Julian Assange as that person. And so... It's a chance for the courts to throw the traitor, the war criminal, back into prison. But she won't talk, and they can't make her talk. Now, Chelsea has got nobody really on her side at this point. But I think strength is going to be her biggest friend here. She has been through so much and I think that she might have had weaknesses at points but she's not really shown it. So as I leave this story Chelsea Manning sits in prison in America for refusing to talk out against Julian Assange but had this to say to the grand jury. You may think that what I have done is a crime against you. It's not. Wake up. Realise I'm telling the truth. You cannot make me speak, and you will not make me speak. The price for telling the truth is harsh. 
I told the truth before and I'm living the pain of telling the truth, but my silence is all I have and I will continue to fight. Whatever suffering you think you can inflict on me is never going to stop me. And so ends the story. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Yeah, the Chelsea Manning story for me is a real, like, it, I mean, that, that right there is an extraordinary story. Because, yes, people have leaked things before. Yes, people have, you know, shared things that they shouldn't have. But Chelsea Manning, in terms of historically, in a hundred years' time, people will still be talking about what Chelsea Manning did because it was the biggest and the most shocking way to sort of de centralise the US government and the US army and that's why the story I think is important but also just because of the struggle that's going on inside of Chelsea so if you want to write to Chelsea in prison you can you can do that um, I think I might I think I might write a wee letter I don't know what I'm going to write in that letter <laughs> Hello, Chelsea. It's Barry. How are you? <laughs> are you well? Are you good? <laughs> I am. <laughs> Don't know why I'm doing it in a Hannibal Lecter voice. But, um, yeah, uh, if you feel like you've got to the end of that story and you think, nope, traitor, dickhead, fucking die in prison, fine. I'm not judging that. No judgment here. No judgement. I said in the beginning, I didn't want this to be about the politics. I just want it to be about the human in the story. And I think the human in the story is interesting. So, anyway, that's that. Alright, I'm going to get out of here. So, if you would like to get in touch, please do email me. ExtraordinaryStoriesPodcast at gmail.com Your emails are fucking amazing join the Facebook group it's a wonderful community it's a beautiful place to be you'll be welcomed with open arms and love and serenaded by song now I can't promise you'll be serenaded by song but something like that will happen I'm on Twitter I'm on Instagram I'm just about basically just get in touch just say hi okay I really hope that you enjoyed these episodes and until I speak to you again my beautiful people <laughs> my beautiful people until I speak to you again my darling ones <coughs> that's even worse before I speak before I speak to you again full stop okay goodbye Eden. It didn't affect me really one way or the other. (laughs) I would imagine from the look on his face... Let's get it on. Let's do it. Let's get it over. Let's get it on. Let's do it. Let's get it over.